Because they're in the same column on the periodic table, sulfur reacts very similarly to oxygen. Thus, a thiol, which really is a sulfur-containing equivalent to an alcohol, will react with a ketone much in the same way that an alcohol will. So if I take a thiol, like this methane thiol, and react it with this alcohol and catalytic acid, I will generate a thioketal. Once again, this is exactly the same as our acetal we were talking about before, except that instead of having oxygens here, I have sulfurs here. The mechanism proceeds virtually identically, except that I have a sulfur atom instead of an oxygen atom. Now this is an interesting uh, reaction. If I have a ketone, like the cyclohexanone, and I react it with a dithiol, now a dithiol is a thiol that has two thiol, or a molecule that has two thiols in it. What occurs is one of these sulfurs comes in and attaches to the carbonyl carbon, thrusting the electrons onto this oxygen. This oxygen gets protonated enough to become a leaving group. And then the second sulfur, which is dangling off here, comes into the same carbonyl carbonate also and kicks off water. This ultimately gives you also a thioketal. The difference between the thioketal shown up here and this one down here is that the one on the bottom is a cyclic thioketal. So the question you might have is, why in the world would I ever want to make a cyclic thioketal? The reason is because you can take a cyclic thioketal and react it with hydrogen gas and rainy nickel, and it will completely remove these sulfur atoms and replace them with hydrogen atoms. Why is that useful? Well, let's go back to the previous slide and imagine that I have this starting material, cyclohexanone. Let's pretend that I'm trying to make a product that doesn't have an oxygen here, but only has two hydrogens here. How in the world can I get rid of that oxygen completely and replace it with two hydrogens? Well, I can go through these two steps. I react this ketone first with a dithiol to generate a thioketal. And then I take that thioketal and treat it with hydrogen gas and rainy nickel to replace the two sulfur atoms with hydrogen atoms. The thioketal used does not have to be a six-membered uh, ring like this. It can also be a five-membered ring. So this cyclic thioketal will also submit to these reaction conditions to completely replace these two sulfurs with hydrogen atoms. You'll notice that that would give me a one, two, three, four, five carbon long chain completely hydrogenated, which is this product, pentane. We now turn back to the question I brought up earlier. If I had this type of product and I wanted to only reduce the ester and not touch the ketone, what could I do? Could I treat this with lithium aluminum hydride? and convert the ester into a primary alcohol and leave the ketone alone? The answer is no. Lithium aluminum hydride is a very potent source of H-. So the H- will go into the ketone as well and reduce it to a, pri or a secondary alcohol. It will also go into the carbonyl carbon of this ester, ultimately producing this primary alcohol. So if I treated this starting material with lithium aluminum hydride, I would not get this product. I would have a single bond to an OH here and this primary alcohol here. So how in the world can I do this? Well, the way I do this is by using chemistry called protecting group chemistry, where I can protect a ketone from being a reacted, reactive to lithium aluminum hydride and then ultimately remove that protecting group later to give me back my ketone. I'm going to show you now how that's done. First of all, I want to mask this ketone as something that will not react with lithium aluminum hydride. What is that something? Well, I'm going to mask it as a cyclic acetal. So if I take this diol, ethane diol, and uh, catalytic acid and react it with my starting material, it will react with that ketone exclusively and give me this cyclic acetal. It will not touch the ester. So the ester gets left as an ester. 
Now, cyclic acetals and acetals in general will not react with lithium aluminum hydride. So when I take this intermediate and treat it with lithium aluminum hydride, the lithium aluminum hydride will reduce the ester. After that ester is protonated with acid, the ester is uh, converted to a primary alcohol, and this acid and water will hydrolyze this cyclic acetal down to a ketone. So what's the bottom line here? Well, I can once again mask this ketone as a cyclic acetal to protect the ketone from this lithium aluminum hydride. The lithium aluminum hydride will then reduce my ester all the way down to a primary alcohol. And when I quench with acid, that acid hydrolyzes the cyclic acetal and converts it back into a ketone. So this is the way I would go about taking this starting material and converting it into this product thereby preserving this carbonyl portion of the molecule. Here's another cool example. You'll see that I have an aldehyde here and a ketone. Now, as it turns out, aldehydes are actually more reactive to attack than ketones. The reason for that is that they have a hydrogen here instead of carbons on both sides. A hydrogen is less bulky and is therefore less obtrusive to having groups come in and attack which means that aldehydes will get attacked more prevalently than ketones. So if I wanted to selectively attack just my ketone with a Grignard reagent and not touch my aldehyde, what I could do is treat this molecule with this diol and acid. As it turns out, because the aldehyde is more reactive than the ketone, you can do this if you have only one equivalent of this diol and it will only form the cyclic ketal or cyclic acetal with my aldehyde and will leave the ketone alone. At this stage, I can now introduce this Grignard reagent, methyl magnesium bromide, and the methyl anion will come into this carbonyl, push the electrons up onto this oxygen, and then I protonate it with acid. It generates this tertiary alcohol and hydrolyzes this cyclic acetal back down to the aldehyde. So this is also a very useful way of selectively reacting with a ketone and leaving the aldehyde alone.